At the start of the year, I assumed that 2020 would be a dull year for smartphones. But oh boy, was I wrong. We have been treated to the best of the best from Asus, Xiaomi and Samsung, along with the new 5 nanometer processed node powered smartphones, the Huawei Mate 40 and iPhone 12 series devices. But more importantly, how does the new tech of 2020 compare to 2019's battery beast, the iPhone 11 Pro Max? Moreover, how does its successor, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, compete in this real life battery drain test? We have the smallest battery all the way on the left hand side being the iPhone 12, and we have the largest cell all the way on the right being the ROG Phone 3's massive 6000 mAh cell. We've updated them all here to the latest available software, iOS 14 on the iPhones, Android 10 on the Android devices. I have also set all of the Android devices to 60 Hertz over here to match that of the iPhone's stalemate 60 Hertz displays. I've dropped the resolution of the Mate 40 Pro and Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra to Full HD Plus to match that of the Apple devices, which are sitting somewhere between Full HD and QHD, with the highest pixel density being on the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro Max, and the lowest being on the Note 20 Ultra. I will be jumping through 15 different applications on every single device. We will also be testing out heat dissipation levels between each time interval. This is my real life battery drain test. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. All phones are currently plugged into charge here to top off at 100%. Unfortunately, I had to buy separate chargers for the iPhone 12 series devices. We're going to be using a thermometer gun here to test out all the phone's temperatures per each interval with a room temperature of around 25.8 degrees in Celsius. Testing out the heat at the start of the test isn't very accurate since this is more so heat dissipation when it comes to charging. Nevertheless, we're going to hit a start on that counter at the right hand side over there, unplug all the devices and we do indeed have the time in interval timer at the top right hand corner which is in relation to the percentage below the branding and above each device. Below the percentage reading at the top of the screen we have the interval degrees in Celsius as well as the peak which we'll get to. The interval will change from charging to interval based as soon as we hit the first interval which we're getting to right now. After just 31 minutes we have 95% on the iPhone 12 which is matching the Note 20 Ultra, 98% on the two Pro Max devices, 99% impressively on the Mate 40 Pro with their 4,400 milliamp power cell, the Mi 10 Ultra matching that at 99% and the ROG Phone 3 hasn't even made a struggle, still sitting at 100% over here. We're nearing the one hour mark and for those of you needing to brush up your knowledge of all these devices, we have some specs at the bottom of the screen in case you forgot about that. 89% on the iPhone 12 after the one hour mark interval, the Note 20 Ultra is doing slightly better than that, a much bigger battery at that though with 91%, though second to last. Third to last is the iPhone 12 Pro Max with 93% ahead of that the iPhone 11 Pro Max with 94% then the Mi 10 Ultra then the Mate 40 Pro matching the ROG Phone 3 so the Mate 40 Pro with a significantly smaller battery than the ROG Phone 3 is doing quite well with the Mi 10 Ultra so far being the hottest and the ROG Phone 3 being the coolest after the 1 hour and 30 minute mark interval 81% on the iPhone 12 10% below that of the Mi 10 Ultra between those two devices we have the Note 20 Ultra above that the Mate 40 Pro the 12 Pro Max and 11 Pro Max are trading blows both at 86% and we have 93% on the ROG Phone 3 here still leading the pack. We do have the current app that we're in at the moment at the bottom right hand corner. It's just a shifted to checking battery stats since we have hit that two hour mark interval. 76% on the iPhone 12, 82% on the Note 20 Ultra, 81% now below the Note 20 Ultra is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Above that matching the Note 20 Ultra is the 11 Pro Max. Way above that the Mate 40 Pro with 88% now beating the Mi 10 Ultra and above the rest is the ROG G Phone 3 just with a 2% gap between it and the Huawei smartphone over here comparing 7 nanometer plus tech on the ROG as opposed to 5 nanometer tech on the Mate 40 Pro. Bear in mind that the Pro Max does also have 5 nanometer processed node technology, the 12 Pro Max that is, and the 12, the 11 Pro Max is still stuck to 7 nanometer plus matching the rest of the Android devices over here. So it'll be really interesting to see how efficient these new 5 nanometer nodes are compared to the predecessor technology. We're currently searching through vids on Instagram over here nearing the three hour mark. Reaching that three hour mark interval we have 64% on the iPhone 12, 10% above that is the Note 20 Ultra now with 74% which is now beating the 11 Pro Max and the iPhone 12 Pro Max both on 73% and 70% respectively. Way above that is the Mi 10 Ultra, 2% ahead of that is the Mate 40 Pro and 4% ahead of that now is the ROG Phone 3. We're currently on YouTube now buzzing through some of my videos in a review 
playlist at the current moment and we're going to be getting into that 3 hour 31 minute mark. Interval 58% on the iPhone 12, 66 on the 12 Pro Max, 69 on the 11 Pro Max, beating the 12 Pro Max. But remember it does have a slightly bigger 3969 milliamp hour cell as opposed to the small-ish, I guess you could say, 3687 milliamp hour cell. But none of them can compare to the 4500 milliamp hour cells on the Samsung and Xiaomi or even that crazy massive 6000 milliamp hour cell on the ROG Phone 3. The hottest peak has indeed been the 11 Pro Max with the hottest current device interval temperature, the Mi 10 Ultra and the coolest on the ROG, but hitting that four hour, one minute interval, we have the iPhone 11 Pro Max still hottest peak, Mi 10 Ultra still hottest interval, and the ROG Phone 3 still coolest of both. Currently in selfie video, 1080p, 30fps, so that they're all matched over here. And we have 54% on the iPhone 12, almost nearing that 50% mark. 6% ahead of that, not much difference between the two, the 12 Pro Max, 4% ahead of that, the 11 Pro Max. And now after the four hour, 30 minute interval, we have the 11 Pro Max, 4% still ahead of the 12 Pro Max. The iPhone 12, the only one below 50% and 46% over here. The ROG Phone 3 not budging with 73%, which is now more than 10% ahead of the Mate 40 Pro, which was not the case earlier on in the test. And we're currently recording main video 4K, 30 FPS. The only reason I keep it at 30 FPS is to match all previous battery drain tests that I've done. I keep all the timings the exact same and I keep the screen brightness at the same as I showed you at the start with the Lux Luminous Meter. The only reason that the 12 Pro Max looks slightly dim at the current moment is because it started overheating and iPhones are known to dim their displays to cool down if they're getting too hot. As you can see with the Santutu benchmark run, all the iPhones over here have started to dim. Now we're jumping into 3D Mark, the wildlife stress test. And as it says over here with all benchmarks, the reason why I do benchmarks is not to drain the phones quickly and get done with the test. I can assure you this test is longer than you assume, but it is more so that we can compare the devices when simulating a real high hitting gaming benchmark, such as 3D Mark Wildlife and Tutu or GFX Bench. After the five and a half hour interval, we're nearing the end for the iPhone 12 at 23%. More than 10% ahead of that is the 12 Pro Max. A lot more ahead of that is the 11 Pro Max with 41%, pretty much neck and neck against the Mate 40 Pro, even though it has a slightly bigger battery. 38%, very disappointing on the Note 20 Ultra after running a couple benchmarks. 40% on the Mi 10 Ultra, not too good. Now almost matching the 11 Pro Max after six hours and one minute with 30% on the Mi 10 Ultra, 29% on the 11 Pro Max, 25 on the 12 Pro Max, which is nearing the 11 Pro Max now, 11% left on the iPhone 12. The ROG Phone 3 is the only one still in yellow here above the 50% mark, which is impressive to say the least. We're nearing the six hours and 30 minute interval. We're already past what I regard as excellent screen on time when it comes to battery life. 7% for the iPhone 12 after that six hour, 30 minute interval. 21% for the 12 Pro Max, much more than the 12. At the start of the test, they were actually pretty similar, but as we go forward, you can see that the 12 Pro Max is doing better. And now narrowing the gap between it and its predecessor, the 11 Pro Max with 24%. The coolest device interval was the iPhone 12 with the coolest peak being the 12 Pro Max. The hottest peak and hottest interval is the Mi 10 Ultra with reaching a peak of almost six degrees in Celsius. You could literally boil an egg on it. After seven hours exactly, the iPhone 12 says cheers to us with an ending temp of 40.2 degrees in Celsius. Not too bad. And checking the seven hour, two minute mark interval, it would have been seven hours, but the iPhone 12 had to say goodbye to us before we could get to that. We have 15% on the 12 Pro Max, obviously 15% ahead of its little brother, the 12, but 4% behind its predecessor, the 11 Pro Max. 24% on the Mate 40 Pro, now significantly better than the Note 20 Ultra and Mi 10 Ultra, but 20% more than the Mate 40 Pro is indeed the ROG Phone 3, which is now hitting 41% after seven hours and 30 minutes. Notice that the iPhone 12's milliamp hour per minute reading is ridiculously low at 6.7 milliamp hours. We'll compare this as more phones start to knock off. It does such an excellent time. Its only drawback is its tiny battery. If they were to increase this battery capacity, it would definitely do better. The Note 20 Ultra obviously passing 5% there since I needed to boost up its brightness when it comes to its display. It tends to dim after 5%. I got it back to the same Lux meter reading as we did at the start of the test. After 
the eight hour mark interval, we have 1% of 0% on the Note 20 Ultra after eight hours and one minute this time around with 44.4 degrees in Celsius at the end here. As you can see, it lasted a lot longer than the iPhone 12 an hour to be exact, but it got a worse milliamp hour per minute reading than the iPhone 12 with 9.35. It does have a bigger battery and that is why, because the iPhone is such a small battery, it actually did a record breaking time of more than seven hours. After eight hours and 30 minutes, 2% left on the 12 Pro Max, 4% ahead of that, its predecessor, the 11 Pro Max with 6%, absolutely great. 9% on the Mate 40 Pro and the Mi 10 Ultra just said cheers to us, 0% after eight hours and 31 minutes, not too shabby over there for Xiaomi, 42.5 degrees in Celsius at the end. The hottest ending result is indeed the Note 20 Ultra when it comes to temps. The 12 Pro Max just knocked out what we've been waiting to see after eight hours and 39 minutes. Not what I was expecting, I was hoping that we would reach that nine hour mark, but it does have a slightly smaller battery than its predecessor, the 11 Pro Max, which I assume will knock out next. We'll have to wait and see it's between it and the Mate 40 Pro as the ROG Phone 3 is just in a league of its own. 3% on the 11 Pro Max and 6% on the Mate 40 Pro. After nine hours, they both made it to that nine hour mark interval, guys. We're now recording selfie video once again at 1080p, 30 FPS. Which one is going to take second place between the 11 Pro Max and the Mate 40 Pro? Of course, we know the ROG Phone 3 will come out on top, but which one will it be? It is indeed the iPhone 11 Pro Max with nine hours and 12 minutes with an ending temp of 41.3 degrees in Celsius. And just a minute after that, the Mate 40 Pro with nine hours and 13 minutes. As you can see, the milliamp hour per minute reading of the iPhone 11 Pro Max is better than the Mate 40 Pro because it has a smaller battery and it pretty much ended at the same time. The iPhone 12 Pro Max has an even better milliamp hour reading than its predecessor, the 11 Pro Max at 7.1 because it has a smaller battery than that as well. Though not quite as good as the iPhone 12, it doesn't seem to be as efficient as that. But remember, it has a much larger screen and it also has a much larger screen, well, a slightly larger screen at 6.7 inches as opposed to 6.5 inches on its predecessor. After 10 hours, we've reached the 10 hour mark on the Asus ROG Phone 3. 19% of juice still left in the tank. That is absolutely remarkable. Best second to that is indeed the Mate 40 Pro with nine hours and 13 minutes. And of course the 11 Pro Max, which did indeed beat its successor, the 12 Pro Max with over nine hours of screen on time, which is great. 10 hours, 30 minutes on the ROG Phone 3 now with 16% left. This is absolutely insane. I've decided not to jump between different benchmarks this time around because when your phone is nearing its end, you more so want to watch some videos or reply to some tweets or just use social media in general. So that is what I'm doing and that is what we're going to get into more after this or maybe even take some snaps. 11 hours, guys. This is the first phone on my channel. We have hit 11 hours with 12% of juice left in the tank. The ROG Phone 3 just passed 10 hours in my last test when testing it at 60 hertz and now it has passed the 11 hour mark interval how much further can it go this is insane i must say that one of the main reasons for this let's get to this first 11 hours 30 minutes seven percent left what are the main reasons it is doing better this time around i think is because X mode tends to auto on even when apps are not set in the armory crates and are not set to use X mode. In my previous test, sometimes it would just sneak in. I made 100% sure to always disable X mode with every benchmark in every game over here. And that is why we have 2% left after 12 damn hours. This is absolutely insane. 12 hours and two minutes, the Asus ROG Phone 3 comes in at. That is ridiculously impressive with an ending temp of 40 degrees in Celsius, the coolest of course being the 12 Pro Max, the hottest end result being the Mate 40 Pro, but the hottest peak being the Mi 10 Ultra and the coolest peak being the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Seventh place here, the iPhone 12 with seven hours on the nose. It's still an absolutely incredible battery monster for such a tiny battery cell. Sixth place, we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with an impressive eight hours and one minutes of screen on time. Of course, a much bigger battery than the iPhone 12 before it. It still did a great job nonetheless. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra same battery capacity as the Note 20 Ultra did 30 minutes better than that at eight hours and 31 minutes. Great job on you, Xiaomi. In fourth place, we have the iPhone 12 Pro Max now surpassing that incredible battery life stage of eight hours and 39 minutes with a smaller cell than the previous Android devices I just mentioned. Third place, its predecessor, very strange, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, though it does have a slightly larger battery than it. Nine hours and 12 minutes is still ridiculously impressive. Second place, we're nearing that territory now, which 
can be unstoppable. The M840 Pro, nine hours and 13 minutes, much bigger cell than the 11 Pro Max, but just one minute longer lasting. First place, the all time battery king of my channel, the Asus ROG Phone 3. I didn't think it could do better than 10 hours, but here we're sitting at 12 hours and two minutes, but it does have a massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery to boot. And when we take a look at the screen on time result of all the phones previously tested on my channel, of course, the ROG Phone 3 is right at the top. The Redmi K30 Pro Zoom Edition is still in second place over there. So Xiaomi is still in rank number two. The Mate 40 Pro did an absolutely superb job, but I must say the same for the 11 Pro Max. Of course, the iPhone 12 Pro Max didn't do a bad job, though not quite as good as its predecessor. Now, if all these smartphones had the same 6,000 milliamp hour cell as the ROG Phone 3, the iPhone 12 would get a whopping 15 hours almost. That is absolutely insane. And that is due to its 6.7 milliamp hour per minute reading over here. Of course, the 12 Pro Max would actually do a better job with the same size cell as the 11 Pro Max since it had a slightly better milliamp hour per minute reading. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be fantastic. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.